let's start. Uh, the second part for today is measurement for the second uh, finishers. This is supposed to be part of your studio number two and studio number three. Okay, so let's start with the first one. <clears throat> I, I am not be able to share the PowerPoint slide because my PowerPoint slide is so big, so the blackboard is not be able to read. Uh, that's why I share with you the PDF file. I hope everyone can see, so you can also double check with your file. Okay, uh, this is the linear outcome. The linear outcome actually is similar with the previous one, but we are going to focus on the finishes, uh, the hand railing and balustrading. The finishes will be the second one. The third one will be hand railing and balustrading. So as usual, you must be able to prepare the key off list, must be able to go through the drawing, identify the item to be measured, and of course at the end, you must be able to prepare the taking off uh, list, uh, taking off quantities, and the BQ. So the ultimate part will be the BQ, okay? The BQ must be completed with the uh, quantity. Start from this week, uh, the student must be able to prepare the BQ for, the sub, uh, for each submission, right? Let's go to the general rule. Okay, the general rule for those staircase finishers, we can refer to section U and section uh, S. Section S is for uh, finishers, actual finishers, institute finishers, and section U will be for painting. Okay, we are going to have a few items that require you to paint. We are going to have the few items that require you to, to do in situ finishes like screening, uh, plastering, uh, and then uh, we are going to refer to the actual clause S.5 after this. But before I go to S.5, uh, let's go through very general uh, clause under section S. Okay, before you start any um, measurement for the finishes, we need to refer to section S. Section S. Point one, point one, uh, refer to the classification. Okay, I would like you to take note on this because sometimes when you handle the project, you have to check whether the staircase is situated or located in the internal building or outside the building. If the building is, um, if the staircase is external, then you have to measure separately. If the staircase is internal, you have to measure separately. But in your studio, you only have one staircase, so there will be no problem with that. Okay, this highlight is important when you need to measure the internal and external work separately. Okay, look at this example. This is the staircase for external. You cannot measure together with the staircase that is available inside this building. Maybe this is double story building or maybe three story building. If you have the staircase inside, do not measure the finishes internal and external together. That should be uh, measured under two separate heading. Okay. Look at the second one. This is also example for the external finishes. Logically, maybe because uh, the quality uh, is different uh, outside, you need to consider more on the weatherproof. Um, and then for internal, maybe that one is not going to be considered. So the specification will be different. Look at the third one as well. This is also to show you external finishes. Okay, external uh, finishes for the staircase. Still under staircase finishes, but you have to separate internal and external. That is what I mean. Okay, now uh, we also need to refer to section U. So basically for this lecture, we will refer to two main sections. One is section S, that is finishes. Another one is section U. Okay, uh, now in general, under section U, you can see that there are four main categories. New work internally, new work externally. Again, if the work is internal external under painting, also you have to measure separately. <clears throat> and C and D is actually for decorating or renovation work, where you need to repaint what had been painted before. So repainting and decorating and repainting for decorating for internal and external, you have to measure separately if they are available in your project. Okay, let's say I give you one set of drawing. And then in one set of drawing, you can see maybe small part here. This is the renovation part. So under this renovation part, if they are item for repainting, you cannot measure the bigger one and the small one together. You may need to measure the smaller one separately under repainting and decorating work. Okay. Now let's move to the detail of section S. Okay. Under section S, I divided into three main category. 
this one is my own category in the lecture note. You may not find this category. I create this group uh, because I would like my students to understand how the uh, method of the construction looks like. And different group may have different ways uh, of the construction and different group of the work need to be carried out. Okay, so let's, uh, we look at number one. Group one is in situ finishes. Okay, in situ finishes here are referring to a pebble wash, a pebble wash finishing. This is like using the small stone or maybe plastering or maybe terrazzo. This is also a group of the work. Tem macadam, this is a special work that is referring to clause S.2 and S.10. Can everyone refer to S.2? What is the title What is the title under S.2? Keep a key. Can you check what is the title under S.2? Keep a key. And maybe uh, what is the clause, what is the title for S.10? The Kylie. S.2 is what? S.2, keep a key. Keep a key. What is S.2? What is S.2? Oh, maybe I have to change the color. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Kipeki. S.2 is in situ finishes. Okay, what about uh, Lee Kylie? What is S.10? S.10, this is different. Lee Kylie or Liu Mei Xiong, what is S.10? S.10 is pets and backing. Okay, sometimes you can combine. Thank you, Liu, uh, Liu Mei Xiong, Lee Kylie, as um, what uh, who is the other one? Keep a key. Okay, sometimes you can continue uh, to join these two together. For example, okay, if you see the word paving in the SMR, uh, if you see the word paving in your uh, description or in the specification, this is referring to this is referring to cement render. Cement render. Let me write down. Okay, cement render doesn't have any more finishes. Okay, paving is referring to cement render. But in your description, we didn't write the word cement render. In the drawing, sometimes you can see the word cement script only or cement render only. That is paving. Okay, so this is referring to S.2, where we call this one as in situ. Cement render consists of what class? Cement plus sand plus water. So whatever you have to mix um, in the side, we call that one is in situ finishes. Okay, the other one, where Lee Kylie highlighted S.10 as bats and backing. What is the meaning of bats? S.10. This is under bats and backing. Okay, bats is something, uh, is the in situ finishes that you have to lay or you have to lay it on flat surfaces. There are a lot of birds around my house. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, class. Laid on the flat surfaces. Okay, so S.10 laid on bad surfaces. So that's why sometimes if you're referring to S.2 and S.10, this one can actually complement each other. This one also referring to in situ finishes. Okay, but the special under S.10, you can refer to S.10.2. You have to mention to receive different material, Receive different must, material must be measured separately. Okay, this is always referring to, if I highlight again, this is referring to the word script. Okay, the meaning of script is normally bats to receive actual final finishes. To receive tiles, for example. Okay, you cannot just put the tiles on the concrete surface. What you need to do is you need to have two layer. This is the towel, and the other one is maybe I draw in yellow color. So this is your script. Okay, that is the meaning of the second one: bats and banting. Uh, sorry, bats and um, bats and backing. Okay, backing means back of what? Okay, back of towels. You should have script. These two are considered as in situ finishes. So I group this one under first grouping. Do you understand, everyone? Why? Because these two normally you have to use same material. Same materials means cement. Okay, you have to use cement. You have to use sand. Eh, cement. <clears throat> you have to use cement. You have to use sand. But different ratio. Ratio is different. What is the meaning of ratio? Maybe cement is one. Sand is three. Okay, cement is one, sand is six. 
Okay, for example, one, two, three, this one is referring to script. One to, seven, uh, one to six is referring to plastering, okay, or paving, okay? Okay, so normally for first grouping, I would like to highlight three categories. Number one, we have one to three script, we have one to six plastering, and we have one to six as paving, okay? So paving is like uh, the finishes that you can see in the parking area, uh, sometimes something like uh, the composition of cement and water and sand, but it is normally shiny a bit. Okay, normally shiny a bit because they are using steel trowel, so very very good surface, flat surface. Okay, but script normally you have to use timber trowel. Normally the surface is very rough, and then a script also sometimes referring to the floating where you have to. Uh, refer to the fitted cap carpeting later, but for plastering, this is normally for painting. Okay, so all of these are something that you have to mix in the side that you have to apply. So this is something that you have to write also in the description. Is it okay, Wally Kim? <clears throat> so please take note on these three categories because I'm going to write uh, down this one again and I'm going to refer to this one again in our next discussion. Wally Kim, is it okay? Go Kai Ching, I win, Alvin Mo, is it okay for these three categories? Okay, thank you for your response. Now let's move to the second category. We are going to go through in detail for this one, don't worry. But this is only the first um, overview. I would like you to see the overview that the finishes has different category. Okay, script, plastering, paving. Script normally to receive uh, towels. Plastering to receive to receive painting, but paving to receive um, no other finishes. This is only cement and sand, but the application is different. Now let's move to the second category. Okay, the second category, let's change the color. Um, I use rectangular. <clears throat> okay, the second category, we uh, identify this one as final finishes. Okay, final finishes for the staircase, normally you can see at the step and the landing. At the side part, normally, they are only plastering and painting. You didn't see that norm, uh, at the side part of the plastering is um, full with the tiles. Okay, normally, the final finishes is only available at step and landing. So, I group this one into three main categories that is normally available and normally apply for our staircase. We have tiles. Um, we have also carpet carpeting, uh, fitted carpeting. Fitted carpeting is the... Um, carpet that you are not be able to remove okay you either need to use glue or you have to either using script there are a few options available in the market and the last one we have vinyl or fitted um fitted linoleum or maybe uh, some people in malay they call it stika getah okay and then uh, nowadays a lot of vinyl also can be diy and this one also has been sold pieces by pieces as well Okay, so this is under flexible sheet finishing. This is also sometimes available in the in the uh, finishes uh, near to the hardwood area, <clears throat> okay, near to the hard place area, uh, workshop, and so on. Okay, so the actual clause we are going to look at this one later, like the tiles is L, uh, S.11, fitted capacity S.34 and S.26, and you can check in your SMM. Uh, the clause for the flexible sheet finishing. Uh, the famous one I highlighted here is vinyl. This is commonly used now. So this one is under S.12. Okay, the last one is painting. This is another section. We have to refer to section U where you need to paint on the plastered surfaces. Normally, we did not paint directly on the concrete, but we paint on the plastered surfaces because the finishes um, for the painting required to have um, better finishes okay they are also different kind of the brush used for the external i put here for the external surfaces <clears throat> external uh, plastering surfaces you can see even in inti if you touch the column at the external area this is very rough okay but for the internal area uh, on the plastering this is soft Okay, not really rough. 
So the type of the brush also different. You can try to go to the hardware shop and and uh, and see. They normally ask you, okay, you want to use the brush for external one or internal one. The brush for internal and external is different. So that is one of the reason why we have to measure this item separately. Okay, let's move to the first one in detail under S.5. Can everyone refer to S.5? Uh, this is under section S. Okay, we focus on section S first. General rule under S.1, we have highlighted before. So uh, S.1, I, I already highlighted before. This is the main category either internal or external category, okay? But the actual clause for the staircase is S.5, okay? Uh, it is stated under S.5.1. You can double check as the following. All work to staircase area shall be given separately. What is the meaning of the word separately? Anyone know? Okay, this one is actually to highlight the word staircase area. How do you know staircase area? Okay, the word staircase area here, for example, the term that we have learned before, the tree, the riser, the landing slab. Okay, what else we have? Chazian? What else we have? Chazian? Other than trade riser, landing slab. Chazian? What are the other staircase area that you have learned in your studio number one? Chazian? So feet off, so feet off, landing beam, yes, correct. And then driven, what else? So feet off, <clears throat> driven, what else? You have so feet off, landing beam, so feet off, landing, driven, chua, kiting. So feet off, landing beam, so feet off, landing slab, driven. Are you okay? Okay, thank you. Then we also have ages of landing slab and we also have sites of landing beam. All of these are considered as staircase area. So when I say, when you say SMM use the word separately, you have to be careful. That means you have to measure all these items separately. Okay, so separately means trade separately, riser separately, landing slab separately, Soffit of landing beam, landing slab, edges, slant, uh, sloping of st sloping staircase, all of these means separately. This is the meaning of this sentence in your SMM. Okay, the right hand side here just to show you different material that can be applied, that can be used, that we, you can see in the market for, um, for the staircase. Okay, you can use hardwood, uh, plain hardwood, open grid. Uh, you can see sometimes the staircase um, for the riser and trade is using a steep plate. Sometimes you can see glass and so on. Okay, so this is the actual clause for staircase area again. Now let's focus on the first category that is under S.2. <clears throat> okay, S.2 is referring to in situ finishing. Again, if I draw in the cross section, you can see that this is your, for example, either paving or either script. Okay, and then on the top, you can see maybe they are tiles, uh, maybe they are parquet. Okay, this one can be either tiles or parquet. Tiles or maybe parquet or maybe mosaic. Okay, or maybe mosaic or hardwood flooring. Okay, so this is the in-situ finishes, but the one that we would like to highlight is S.2.1 or S.10. Okay, what needs to be written in the description? Kind of material. Okay, kind of materials mean cement and sand. Normally, in-situ finishes are referring to... Okay, let me write down text. Cement. So, if I write next to this one, you can see cement and sand. What about the composition and mix? Okay, this is the detail we can write down. Maybe ratio, okay, 1.3 or maybe 1.6. This one, you can either refer to the specification in your construction technology notes or else you can refer back to the specification in general that you have learned in the contract administration, okay? So this is uh, based on the method of application. You can see either script or maybe paving, um, 
The word pave normally come together with the word trowel. Trowel here means the application uh, that normally they use steel trowel so that the, 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 the surface is very flat. Okay, or if you see the word plastering, if plastering, <clears throat> they use the application as plasticizer. Plasticizer. See, plasticizer. And then in terms of the thickness, okay, this thickness I would like everyone to take note. Generally, it can be 19 mm, it can be 20 mm, it also can be 25 mm. Normally, the maximum is about 25 mm. You may see uh, this application, this information in the right hand side of your drawing or maybe at the specification. If it is not being stated, then specification. Then you have to know that this is general information that you need to know. The number of codes, this one, if applicable, if not applicable, normally we didn't write. If applicable, especially if you use a bituminous or uh, application that require codes, if not, I will put here NIL. Okay, so from this one, maybe I can use red. This one I put not relevant. Normally, this one also uh, surface treatment. This is what had been stated before. Normally, we write steel trowel, wood floated, polish, and so on together with the method of application. Together with application. Okay, and any special curing, curing this one only, if any. If not, I will put here NR. Okay, sorry, N dash R. So this is not relevant, or we can put NIL new. Okay, so if you combine all of this, you can get good description. You can get a good description. Now, let's we focus on the category. I start with number one, the first category, part one. This is similar to the finishes <clears throat> for tiles and the script. So what does it mean? You can take quantity. Once you measure the script, you can take quantity to measure the tiles. For example, if you measure the trade, okay? Thank you, Ifan, for joining us. Uh, you can take the quantity for the tiles. Once you measure the script for a riser, you can take the quantity to measure for the tiles for riser. So basically, there are three items under group number one. And then for the carpet, we cannot take to get a quantity. So we still have three main quantity. Uh, part three, this is for special item where you have for the nosing. If you don't have nosing, then you don't have to measure the last one here, plastering and painting. See the grouping? Plastering is for painting. Okay, if you look at this one first category, if you need to put the tiles, you need to have the script. Okay, and then if you need to put carpet, you also need the script. <clears throat> but I didn't put this one together because you cannot take quantity. We will do this one, uh, in, we will discuss this one in detail later. Okay, and the part three here again, this is for the nosing. You can see something like overhang. This is also part of the anti-slippery. And the last category is um, plastering and painting. So when I group all of these together, that means you can take quantity. You understand the word take quantity? You can just write down the quantity in the quantity box. So you don't have to show all of this measurement again. Okay, let's start with um, the detail in S.5. Okay, under S.5, can everyone refer to your SMM? Work to landing shall be so described. What does it mean? How many category, how many landing that you can see in your, in your uh, staircase? We have LB, landing beam. We also have a landing slab. So you have to measure the work to landing separately. This one we have discussed before, we have either soffit, we have other edges, and we have either sides of all components for the landing. Okay, uh, item number two, work to trade and riser shall be given in meters, setting the dimension. Okay, so you have to measure trade and riser separately, but don't forget to write the dimension. The word dimension means, okay, for riser, Let's say you scale, you get 230. So you have to write two riser 230 mm high. And then for example, for the trade, you get 500 mm. So you have to write down to trade 500 mm uh, in horizontal. Okay, and then uh, this clause also highlighted on the nosing. You have to measure S extra over. Look at this. Nosing, measure S extra over. 
And then the last one, the string shall be given in meter, setting the width. Okay, general rule, I can put here. I would like everyone to take note. General rule, the quantity can be taken as your formwork. Okay, so when you start doing your studio this week, you can also refer back to the dimension that you have learned in the formwork, provided that you consider the dimension for the brick wall that attached to it. That means if you need to measure the width of the staircase, for example, the width of the staircase. Previously, we count the staircase as 1.2, right? 1,200. If you see that they are brick wall on the top of the <coughs> staircase, you have to consider deduction of the brick wall because the finishes is carried out after the brick wall had been finished. Okay, so you have to do deduction for the brick wall. For the brick wall. Same goes to when you want to measure for the edges of the slab. Okay, previously you can see your slab may be like this. Eh, sorry. I draw again. For example, this is your uh, edges of the slab, and maybe this one is your landing beam. Previously, when you measure, let me change color. Let's say you take the dimension similar as the edges of the slab. Okay, here, this is the edges of the slab in your formwork. But what you need to do is you have to deduct the size of your brick wall here because they are brick wall. So originally, you can take the dimension that you have uh, measured in the formwork, but don't forget to do deduction where they are brick wall. That is the general rule of the, uh, of the measurement for the staircase finishes. Okay? Okay, class, so you don't have to remeasure again and again. Now let's move to um, the discussion of your drawing number three. Can all of you refer to drawing number three? Can you refer to drawing number three, class? Okay, what are the type of the finishes available in drawing number three? I win. Can you see the finishes for drawing number three? I win, Elvin uh, Moore and Anastasia. Can you see the one that has been highlighted? What kind of the finishes highlighted here? Can you write down again? I win. Liu Mei Xiong, Go Kai Ching. You can either refer to this slide or you can either refer to the drawing, uh, your own drawing. They are pake. Okay, pake means type of the timber. So when they are pake, means you have to uh, install the script underneath. And the detail of the pake also have been given here, 130 times 130 times 10 mm, um, 10 mm thickness. Okay, and then you can see also here the skirting, they are skirting, and the skirting is using terrazzo. So terrazzo means you need to have the finishes for the terrazzo, you also need to have the script underneath. So how many items basically available? There are two main items available for the parquet because you need to have script and parquet. For the skirting, also you need to have uh, terrazzo skirting and also terrazzo skirting script. Okay, and then the rest of the information in the drawing, you can see from the notes here, cement and sand 1.6, that is the ratio for the plastering, shall be applied for soffit and other surfaces of the staircase. So where are the surfaces of the staircase that you have to measure? Let's say I group together again, uh, based on category. So the first item that you have to measure, basically, number one is riser. Okay, number two is tray. This is horizontal. And number three, I highlight different color. Number three is your landing slab. So the first one, two, and three can be grouped uh, under first main heading, that is your parquet. Can you see that? That is how you do your item to be measured. If I write again, you can write this one as uh, the first category. We have cement and sand, one, three, script. Okay, so this is uh, the first grouping. I put this one as the main heading. 
So how you want to write description, you can write down here to, you can write down to riser, then please ensure that you refer back to S.5.2. To riser, you have to write down the height, 200 mm height, H I G H. Then number two, you can write down to trait, and then write down the size. Okay, but number three, we don't have any sizes. Okay, two landing slab, full stop. Okay, but don't forget, uh, in the actual description, under S.10, you have to mention cement and Sanskrit to receive pake. To receive pake as described. This is only taking off this, yeah? Okay, so there are basically three main items to be measured based on this category. Once you have finished measuring all this item, you can continue with pake as the main heading. Then continue item number four. You can copy what you have measured in the first item uh, and the second item and the third item. You can write here to screeded riser. Then number five, copy again to the word screeded can be similar, right? So you can write detail to trade. And then number six, number six, you can write down screeded as well. So you can use the word detail to landing slab. This is how you identify the item to be measured. Because the first, uh, the first three components here normally having similar, normally having similar specification. So this is the first um, part of our discussion. We will go through this one in detail. But now I would like everyone to take note on how you want to identify the item to be measured based on the specification. So the rest, we can continue with the plastering because if you refer back to the first category here, if you refer to the first category, sorry, I need to zoom in. Go catching, okay? First category, okay. Number one, we have two sides of the string. Two sides of string. Two string. So maybe I just put string. Okay, and then here you have number two. Two soffit of sloping stickies. Can you see the item are exactly similar as the formwork? Number three, edges of the landing slab. Okay, and then here you can see they are um, so a bit of sloping staircase, string, and then here also you have soffit, soffit of landing slab. Okay, what else we doesn't uh, we did not measure? Okay, the question is either you need to measure sides and soffit of landing beam or not of side and soffit of landing beam. Okay, if you look at here, they are brick wall underneath. So when they are brick wall, you don't have to measure. You no need to measure. Because the brick wall and the the brick wall and the landing slab at the side of this one will be covered under wall finishes. They will do one straight um, measurement. Okay. If there is no um, if there are there, there there is no brick wall, then you have to measure side ends of it off landing beam. So item number one until number four that I highlighted in blue color. This one is the least for the plastering. Once you measure for the plastering, you have to measure for. Once we have to measure, you can actually TQ mean state quantity for painting. That is how you measure the item to be measured. Okay? Okay, Ifan? Can you see that? Mama Ifan is here. Iwin is here. <clears throat> I actually writing. Uh, so that's why sometimes I didn't uh, use pointer. So when you see the flow, um, then you can see one by one. So I repeat, yeah, for the blue color, for the blue color, this is for the plastering. Two string, number two, soffit of sloping, and number three, edges of landing slab. And you also can see the word soffit of landing slab. If you refer to this item again, 
this one these four items are uh, actually the same item as you have seen for the homework sometimes i didn't use but uh, i didn't use pointer because i would like to highlight so you can see the one that i highlighted here these are the items that i would like to focus okay and then the other one the side and soffit of landing beam you don't have to measure if the uh, side of and soffit of landing beam is attached with the is attached with the brick wall okay we will do the detailed discussion on this one in the studio later okay let's see um, the example for number one the example for number one is where you can see this photo this is the photo where the people uh, where the worker is applying sea trowel on the surfaces of your trade and the riser this is the trade and this is the riser so how you want to put in the description okay cement and sand paving as described the word paving is referring to cement render so this is also referring to the word cement render okay uh, remember the information as what i told you under s.2 <clears throat> just now s.2 required you to write down cement and sand as the main category this is cement and sand and then after that you have to write down the composition after that you have to write down the application and then the thickness and then uh, the other one um, is the actual uh, in, uh, actual location that is the trade if you refer back to s.5 you have to write down the size okay you can actually use the word detail here and then continue with the word undercut riser don't forget to write down the size the answer for the measurement is similar to the answer of the form work to riser. That means the width of the staircase. In your example, the width of the staircase is 1200. So we actually measuring from this line to this line. This line to this line. Because you already write down the height. So how you want to measure the numbers. You can put here the numbers of riser times width times with 1200 okay Alvin Alvin more timing so this is the formula yeah okay Chachanyan is everything okay this is another example look at this example you can see that um, the cement and sand had been uh, added with the pigment so the final layer is already covered with the cement and sand that is brownish color Okay, you can see cement render sometimes in, uh, they already put in the pigment. Pigment means the coloring. Okay, and then this is how the dimension is. This is the application using C trowel. The example for number two uh, is also paving, but this is for the different category. This is the different example that is a uh, landing slab, but the example of the item or material are similar. Okay, look at this example. For landing slab, you have to ensure that you check the detail of the brick wall. Okay, what if they are brick wall on the top of this landing slab? You can take the dimension similar as the formwork here. This is the actual dimension for the formwork. For example, you get 1720. In our previous discussion, some of you scale, you get 1680. Some of you scale, you get 1700 or 1720. But remember to deduct this area. You have to deduct the thickness of the brick wall. Okay? So the measurement is the length on plan times the width on plan. What I would like to highlight here is the length on plan must be here only. Please consider the deduction of the brick wall. Okay, next one uh, is the component where you have to measure according to S.5 and also according to the item that required to be plastered and pinned. Look at the way we write the description. Cement and sand, 1.16 is the ratio. Approved plasticizer, this is application to make sure that the surface is very flat. You can see here they are using, they are using C trowel. So the surface is flat. Okay, and then um, the actual application is based on what we discussed before. 
you have to identify the thickness 16 mm 19 mm 20 25 and so on after that you have to write down to the location soffit of landing slab in meter square a side of the open string in meter this is under s.5.5 and then after that soffit of sloping staircase in meter square landing beam in meter square landing slab in meter square okay the rule is if the unit okay if the unit is not stated in S.5. Okay, I put here the unit must be in meter square. That is the basic rule. Okay, because some of you may ask me, is how do you know that the length step is meter square? This is a general rule because under S.5, no information about uh, the unit of measurement for landing slab. So we have to use back this rule. If the unit is not set in meter square uh, or it's not stated in S.5, you have to use S point, uh, you have to use the general rule is in meter square. Okay. Now next example is for the landing beam. No measurement for the soffit of the landing beam if the wall is installed below the landing beam. There are certain situations if you see the uh, the landing beam uh, at the school. Okay, sometimes you can see that there is no brick wall. So you have to measure the finishing for the side and soft it off landing beam in meter square. The formula is exactly similar as in the form work length 2.6. For example, here you get the length 2.6. Then you have to get the here the height here 200, this one 200, and this is another. This is another 200. Okay. Um, I also would like to highlight for those who cannot imagine how the trowel looks like. Uh, this is how the trowel looks like. This one. This is the hog, a bucket trowel, float trowel. This is a small tool, also known as trowel, plastic float. This is normally floating or to receive the screening. And this is how you apply. Okay. Uh, sometimes you can see the, the they are sharp edges. And sometimes not sharp edges. This is normally at the corner. So all of these are considered as trowel. Okay, to make sure everything is flat enough so that you can paint properly. Okay, that's one. Um, the example of this description for the painting also have been given here. But this is the painting for the surfaces that we have discussed before. To solve it of landing beam. You don't have to show the measurement again. You can take quantity, surfaces of the open string, okay? Um, but if you refer to the unit of measurement for the string, this is different, yeah? The script for, this, the, script for the open string is meter. Why? This one is stated in S.5. This is stated in S.5, okay? But in section U, there are different rules because... If the curve, if the curve is not exceeding 300 mm, you have to measure in meter. If the curve is more than 300 mm, you have to measure in meter square. This is the basic rule. Okay, can everyone take note on this one? This is under section U. The rest are all such. Uh, the rest are all similar, similar as your screening or plastering. Now let's move to the additional item. If available, we have nosing. Okay, there are few material that can be used for the nosing. This is the strip nosing. Use steel. This is also use steel. And then sometimes you can see here. This is how the design is. A vinyl plus. Aluminium strip nosing. This is how it looks like. Can you see something that is beyond a little bit? This is the example of the nosing. They purposely made uh, to make sure that you you um, consider this one as anti-slippery. Okay, so the nosing must be measured under S.5 in meter only. How the description looks like? This is the example. The measurement can be taken from the trade. Okay, why? You can see that it is here, then count again the numbers of the tray. Okay, since the unit is meter, so the answer is 
sorry, 1.2 times numbers of trade. Okay, 1.2 is the weave of your weave of the kiss. Extra over CPN and SMP wing, and then what is the actual finishes? For the nosing, we have to measure the script and the actual material for the nosing in one description. Material in one description. You don't have to measure this item separately for the script and the finishes. Only one item. This is a mention in the actual clause in S.5. Okay. This is the next one for the tiles. Finishes for the tiles, we have to refer to S.11. Okay, so this is under S.11. Generally, under S.11, uh, there are information about how you want to write the description. So you can see here the kind of the tiles, kind of the tile, for example, because concrete tile or maybe mosaic or maybe natural stone. Uh, in our common design, normally we have ceramic tiles. Okay, you have to write down the size. You have to write down the thickness. The thickness can be 8 mm, 10 mm until 20 mm thick. Okay, this is also what you have learned in your construction technology as well. Shape is only applicable if the, un the unit or the design is other than rectangular. If not, you don't have to write down. Nature of the surface finish, sometimes it is homogeneous, sometimes it is rough surface, sometimes it's very glossy. So that one also has to be measured. Uh, have to be stated in the description, bedding and pointing under uh, fixing. This is normally using white jointing or we can uh, use the white color cement. Okay, treatment of the joint, layout of the joint and cover fillet. I purposely highlight this one in blue color because normally the last three items here uh, is not available to be written unless this is really stated in the specification. If not, Treatment, layout, and cover fillet, you don't have to write in the description. Focus on the one that I mentioned here in uh, the pink color. On your right hand side, these are the example of the tiles available in the market. Okay, or finishes available. And this is to review what you can see uh, in your finishes. You can also see this one again in your construction technology lecture notes for those who or don't want um, experience having CT class with me before, but this is just to highlight. If you have the floor strap, a floor slab here, or this is your staircase, you can see that this one is your screeded bed, and here is your floor finishes. Okay, and then how you want to write down the description? 300 times 300, this is the size, the thickness is 15 mm. Homogeneous, homogeneous is the type of the tiles. Bedded on jointed, this is how you write down uh, the jointing between each either, and you have to write down on the screeded bed. So the last sentence, I put this one to the last sentence so that you can use detail to the trade, to the riser, and to the landing slab. In this sketch also, you can see there are information about the skirting, where you have to measure the skirting separately. Okay, any question class? <clears throat> I think I'm I'm going to stop for a while. Any questions so far?